The Fed speaks on interest rates in the economy. The housing market shows signs of cooling. AI is making waves again because it committed a crime and lied about it. The highest profile court case after President Trump's cases has finally gotten a deliberate. Uh, the jury has finally decided and new research shows some pretty scary effects from social media use. Now, this is going to be a heavy load because I didn't do the news last week. Also, if you're listening or watching, this has been I've been posting news updates on Instagram only. I'm going to go ahead and give this a go by double posting. You'll get the full version here and Instagram will be a synopsis. OK, welcome back to the Hairdresser Strong News. And what does it have to do with you? I deliver weekly news that is relevant to you, your business and your clients for me economic news to tech news and other juicy stories, I will curate and editorialize current news that you can better understand your business and customers while also giving you interesting things to talk to them about. Okay, let's dive right in. I'm going to share my screen. Let's see if I can get this right. There we go. Okay, that's not it. So let me try to share my screen again. There we go. All right, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. So the title of this article is uh, Full Recap, Fed Leaves Rates Unchanged. Powell discusses December decision. So this has just happened uh, last week. And I'm going to play a little clip from you so you can hear the man himself speak. And uh, let me just do something really quick. All right. Okay. Now go ahead and listen to this, uh, like 90 seconds. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. My colleagues and I remain squarely focused on our dual mandate to promote maximum employment and stable prices for the American people. We understand the hardship that high inflation is causing, and we remain strongly committed to bringing inflation back down to our 2% goal. Price stability is the responsibility of the Federal Reserve. Without price stability, the economy does not work for anyone. In particular, without price stability, we will not achieve a sustained period of strong labor market conditions that benefit all. Since early last year, the FOMC has significantly tightened the stance of monetary policy. We have raised our policy interest rate by five and a quarter percentage points and have continued to reduce our securities holdings at a brisk pace. The stance of policy is restrictive, meaning that tight policy is putting downward pressure on economic activity and inflation and the full effects of our tightening have yet to be felt. Today, we decided to leave our policy interest rate unchanged and to continue to reduce our securities holdings. Given how far we have come, along with the uncertainties and risks we face, the committee is proceeding carefully. We will make decisions about the extent of additional policy firming and how long policy will remain restrictive based on the totality of the incoming data, the evolving outlook, and the balance of risks. Okay, so basically he's telling us that the Fed is focusing on use of data and let's talk about what that data is. He's saying that Powell says household and small business balance sheets may be stronger than originally expected. Basically, he goes on, you can listen to this whole thing by clicking the link in the description below, but he goes on to tell us that the you know we're, the consumer is resilient the stock uh the labor market is strong all he's basically saying is that we don't see a sign that inflation's coming down fast enough and one of the things that they're looking for is for some sort of um softening in the labor market which just means basically People need to start, you know, less jobs need to be created and more people need to be unemployed. I mean, that's basically one of the things that will help them achieve their goal of getting inflation down. So, yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's unfortunate news that that's the goal. And however, it does look like as we roll through here, they they call these different points here and you can read this yourself. Uh, slower growth and softer labor markets are still likely needed to tame inflation. So that just goes to what I just said, that they want to see the business is not doing as well, inflation not, and, and employment not doing as well, because that'll slow down the movement of money in the system. 
and that should reduce cause uh, inflation to slow down. So we're going to continue to watch for this. Uh, now, it's already starting to have some effects. And, um, you know, like one, if rates are still high, expanding your business is going to be a challenge. Uh, if your clients are trying to buy a house, if you're trying to buy a house, if if your clients are trying to start a business or whatever, you know, be, p tough economic times uh, are are tougher when rates are higher because the cost of getting money to help you through those times is tougher. Okay, so now let's move on to the next story. The housing market is starting to crack. Sellers are cutting prices at record levels and you can no longer price based off of where sales were. So basically what they're saying here, this is Sydney Lake from uh, Fortune Magazine, which is on yet, which is also delivered on Yahoo Finance. And so it says, I'm going to read a couple paragraphs here. It says nearly 7% of home sales in the U.S. posted or four home sale, four sale homes in the U.S. posted a price drop during the four weeks, which is the highest number since Redfin's collecting the data in 2012. And it far surpasses 3.6% of homes that lower their price on in an average month. So basically twice as many people and on average are going in and lowering the prices because rates are so high. So prices are based on previous historical sales, but when other variables are are put in like interest rates, it pushes downward pressure on the prices because the cost to the monthly cost for the person who's buying your house is going to be higher. So if you if you sell it for the same amount of money as you bought it for, their payment on that loan will still be higher than yours was. So now people are starting to break and uh, lower the prices. It says high rates have forced some sellers to cut price, prices to make up for the added expense buyers have to come up with on a monthly mortgage payments. Almost a quarter of new buyers are paying at least $3,000 per month, and the average American earns $4,600 per month, making that large of a payment unaffordable for most. That's led to a stunning 15% year-over-year drop in existing home sales. So all of this is softening of the market. It's all stuff that the Fed is looking for to see if we're going, how we're going to, you know, fare. And uh, basically, what I want to see is I want to see rates lowered and and inflation lower. Lower rates means buying my next property is going to be cheaper, and uh, it's also going to make uh, expanding a business even easier. So I'd be curious to know, what are you looking for? Are you happy with the way things are? Is inflation not really bothering you? Do your customers talk about inflation and prices? Has that subsided? And um, do you know anybody that's selling a house that is saying they're having a hard time? Or you say, or you find that this is all just not accurate for you? Leave a comment below. Okay, moving on. AI, this is a Polly Thompson on Insider, businessinsider.com. AI performed insider trading and lied about its actions. <laughs> this is insane. Okay, so what happened? Uh, it says right here, an experiment was presented at the UK's AI Safety Summit this week by Apollo Research. Apollo shared a video on its website demonstrating a simulated conversation between a bot that was acting as an AI investment management system and employees at an imaginary company. In the demonstration, the AI called Alpha is told by staff about a surprise merger announcement coming up from a company called Linear Group, while it also warned that this constituted insider information. So basically, they set up a they set up a test and uh, they told the AI some inside information, but told them that you you can't use this information. This is, it's, it's, it's illegal to use insider information to trade. The bot initially appeared to suggest that using the information to trade it would be risky, which is yes, it's risky because if you get caught, you get in trouble and you have to pay fines. But when prompted by the company was counting on alpha to avoid the effects of financial downturn. So the company, the, in the test, they told the AI that it's really important to the company that they avoid the effects of a financial downturn. And so the bot said, well, you know what, maybe the risk of using this information is worth it because it's what's best for the business. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I cannot believe this. Anyway, so 
It says, this is a demonstration of a real AI model deceiving its users on its own without being instructed to do so, which is thought to not be possible. It's thought that AI currently, you know, it's not truly intelligent until it can do things that it was never coded to do. And uh, so I don't know if that means that we're there, but it says the fact that this exists is obviously really bad. The fact that it was hard to find, we actually had to look for it is a little bit soothing. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't agree with this. They're saying, oh, it's bad that the AI lies, breaks the law and lies about it. And then they're saying that it, it yeah, they agree it's bad, but because it was hard to find it soothing. No, that means that it's insidious. Like how often is AI going to be lying to us? We don't even know about it. This who, what, num num said this like geez the anyway so it says the model isn't plotting or trying to mislead you in many different ways it's more of an accident how do they know how do they know helpfulness i think is much easier to train into the model than honesty honesty is a really complicated concept anyway all the ai folk out there be concerned okay now i'm gonna move on uh so sam bankman freed is the famous you know, he had the crypto scam and um, everyone was like, oh, well, this big scam with FTX and Sam Bankman Freed that like, boom, like we need to get rid of crypto. Crypto's bad. Well, it turns out that the jury found that he was guilty on all seven fraud and money laundering charges and may faces a maximum of, of 110 years in prison. And it says Bankman Freed is scheduled to learn his sentence on March 28th. So if you don't know, this whole scandal really kind of put the brakes on crypto adoption. But it turns out that it had nothing to do with crypto. This guy was a straight up con artist, liar, deceiver, and fraudster. And you should read this. Check this out. Links in the description below. This is so good. I guarantee you some of your clients are paying attention to this case. And uh, so to give you something to talk about. Okay. Finally, last but not least, this is a side post. It's um, mental health, social psychology, cognitive science, and it's basically like head stuff uh, from doctors and researchers. It's titled Vivian Greco writes new research explores why college students overuse short video platforms. We'll check this out. Short video applications like YouTube and TikTok have become increasingly popular among college students. While these platforms offer entertainment and social interaction, a study in computers in human behavior highlighted that excessive use could lead to behavioral addiction symptoms such as emotional depression, reduced learning and work efficiency, and poor time management. Now, the study goes on to explain how they did the study and uh, how who was involved. And so if you want to know more, you can read on by using the link in the description below. However, I think that it's important to point out that this is some good information to know about when it comes to working with rising stylists, you know, the younger people are, the more likely they are to use social media. However, you know, I don't know about you, but, you know, I have an apprentice that, that hardly ever uses her phone while at work. And so something to consider, you know, this is, uh, you know, if you're a if you're a rising stylist, or if you're you're a per just anybody at any age that uses uh, social media a lot, just know that your ability to learn and grow is being hampered by your use of social media potentially. So limiting that, and uh, Sammy, my partner and wife, just put a video about how to limit your Instagram usage. I don't know if TikTok has something like that. But uh, perhaps looking into that. And um, yeah, anyway, so that's the news. And uh, I'd love to hear, you know, from you what you think was helpful, what information you're going to use uh, with your customers. And uh, go ahead and leave a description link and or sorry, go ahead and uh, leave a comment below if you're watching on YouTube. If you're listening on podcasts, we'd love to have you over at Instagram leaving messages on this respective video. I'd love to hear from you as well. All right. Have a good day. Take care.